Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Bright Road front and back light set. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO96. So, a headlight and a taillight sold together. You need both of them, so why not? Um, a quick note, the, uh, the set that I was testing um, had a slightly different taillight than the one that is currently uh, shown on Bright Road's website. Um, so the, the model that I had was the BRS40. Um, it appears to be discontinued now. You can still find it on uh, some retailers, um, but it's this kind of like square version of the uh, taillight um, as opposed to the round one that they are currently selling. Um, also, a shout out to Lily Beyer for letting me uh, borrow and test her set uh, over the winter months. This set comes in at $40 um, for, you know, that, that includes both the headlight and the taillight, which is pretty impressive. For brightness, um, the headlight maxes out at 800 lumens, um, and then um, the taillight I couldn't actually find any like for sure numbers, but the headlights unit number is BR800 and it's 800 lumens. Um, I assume that the BRS40 is probably 40 lumens for the taillight. Uh, the headlight also has some like glow in the dark plastic, like kind of in the front of it, kind of, you know, framing the area where like the headlight beam comes out. Um, so I, I guess that that makes it kind of visible even when like the light is off. I don't know. For size, um, the headlight is a little bit wider than a lot of other headlights like in its class. Um, it's also rectangular, which is kind of unusual, um, but it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's about the size that you would expect. Um, the casing is also made of aluminum, which feels really premium, but also makes it a little bit heavier than a lot of the other uh, lights that, that I have um, tried out. Um, it's not a huge issue. You know, I never noticed that extra weight while I was riding. Um, and then the tail light, I mean, it's nice and light. It's uh, just a couple of like square inches um, and it's, a, and it's a, a square unit. So battery life. Holy moly. This headlight lasts forever. Um, their website claims 18 hours. I don't know about that, but like it was certainly lasting a heck of a lot longer than the light in motion Urban 500 that I use uh, normally in my day to day. Check out a couple of episodes ago here on Second Opinion for my review of uh, of that unit. Um I also didn't really have any like cold weather woes uh, while I was using this headlight. Um, the the light in motion Urban 500, uh, you know, will kind of flicker and die when it's uh, cold out, even if it still has enough like you know battery life to last. Um, but I never encountered that with the uh, Bright Road BR800 headlight. The tail light is uh, well. It's one of them smart lights that only turns on when it senses motion. Um, luckily, though, it also has a button on it so that you can like completely turn it off if you want to, um, which I consider to be kind of a critical feature because like if I'm riding around in bright daylight, I don't really want like my tail light to be on all the time. Um, just because it it senses that I'm moving, um, because like I I don't want to waste all that battery life. Uh, both of these units uh, charge via micro USB, which is unfortunate if you ask me because I'm trying to move into a world where I only need to use like USB-C cables to charge all of my devices. But I mean, I guess it's cheaper for them to use micro USB. So that's what we're stuck with. As for durability, um, both of these units are IPX6 rated, um, which means that uh, they were not tested for like particulate matter ingress. And for water, it has been rated to resist um, ingress of any water jets that are like shot at it from any angle, um, but it is not rated for being submerged in water. So keep that in mind um, when you're using it. Like, normal biking circumstances you don't expect to like have your light get submerged um but i guess you know try not to drop it in your bathtub when you're at home i guess 
Um, the headlight is a uh, quick release unit. Um, so when you uh, you strap it uh, to the handlebar and then um, you can you know attach and detach the light from the strap, which is uh, really nice because um, then you don't have to bother with like, oh, I got to make sure that I get this strap nice and like secure the next time that I put it on as well. Um, and it's you know it's just uh, it's a lot quicker. Um, I will note that you want to make sure that you know which direction the light is supposed to go onto the handlebar or onto the strap because I did it wrong the first time. I did it backwards and uh, the light ended up falling off of my handlebars <laughs> while I was in the middle of Pennsylvania Avenue. So that was a fun time uh, getting to, you know, pick that up and then like putting it, like trying to attach it back onto my handlebars um, while there's cars going by at 45 miles an hour. No big deal. Um, that quick release mechanism is also like, it's, it's a little plastic, you know, release kind of clip, um, which does make me a little bit nervous, um, for it's like, you know, longevity, durability. Um, but, uh, I didn't encounter any problems there in the, you know, brief couple of months that I was, uh, testing it out. The tail light though, I do have concerns about, um, because the tail light fell off of its, uh, strap, like, um, uh, I, it must have happened probably when the bike was, um, at the shop, uh, for, for some maintenance. And, uh, when I got the bike back from them, I noticed like, oh, hey, look, there's the, the rubber strap that like attaches the taillight to, to my bike frame, but the bike, the light's not there anymore. So it must have like, you know, bumped up against something and just like came off of the, um, the rubber strap. Uh, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, I wasn't, you know, like I had to buy a new taillight, uh, before I gave the, the whole set back to Lily because like, well, it's not mine. So I got to replace it. So final thoughts, man, I really want that headlight. That's a nice headlight. And like, it's super cheap. I don't understand how, like how they managed to get such a high, battery life and like such good low temperature performance out of it um you know and and keep the price so low um that it wow i might i might just like uh buy one of those headlights um next time that i need one um i wasn't as impressed with the tail light um i mean it is uh brighter than the vibe micro that i use um but it didn't like you know blow me away i mean there's also a lot less like riding on a tail light. Um, I feel like it's it's a lower stakes game uh, in that space, um, and also the fact that like it fell off of its strap under unknown circumstances um, is greatly concerning to me. So um, I don't know if if you're looking at this like they they do sell the headlight and the tail light separately. Um, so I I should think that like uh, buying the headlight would be a good idea, um, and then finding a different tail light to buy. Um, probably is is the way that I would go for that. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO96. If you have thoughts about uh, bike lights, feel free to discuss them with our other listeners on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. Second Opinion is supported by listeners like Quentin Pongratz, who voluntarily joined us on Patreon. If you would like to help out as well and get some cool perks along the way, you can find us at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.